I want to tell you about an exchange I had with a young couple this week. They're in that stage of life where they're earning well, but they're also raising kids and paying a mortgage and generally finding it difficult to accumulate wealth. To be provocative, I whispered to my friend, I never wanted to let on, but we're pretty rich. My girlfriend played along and she said, oh, really? And I said, yeah, I have a freezer full of kosher meat. And if you know anything about the cost of kosher meat, we must be doing all right. It struck me that I'm not certain that very many people feel wealthy, even if they are. By all intents and purposes, there's been no period in history as prosperous as right now. Global poverty and education levels are at the best they've ever been. We are facing some challenges in the way of inflation and high interest rates, but the national average wage for Canada, which is measured by the yearly maximum pensionable earnings published by the Canada Pension Plan, is a very respectable $66,600 for 2023. If you live in a large urban area, there's a good possibility that you might be close to or earning above that national average. Shouldn't that make us feel wealthy? No matter how much we earn, even multiples of the national average, we never feel like we have enough. But wealth goes well beyond numbers on a page. In my 20 years as a financial planner, I have yet to see anyone frame their investment or bank statement and feature it on the wall of their home. I'm not sure if you ever noticed, but the Q in quintessence wealth has three squiggly lines underneath to represent what we refer to as the three W's, wealth, wellness, and well-being. As a financial planner, I really work on the intersection of all three, ensuring that we monitor your financial situation to optimize it for whatever is most important to you and encourage you to live your best life right now. In my field of financial planning, we have a lot of great work being done on how to encourage a greater incorporation of those three elements, wealth, wellness, and well-being, into our client services. At a recent industry conference, I had the good fortune of meeting Brian Portnoy, whose writings on behavioral finance are amazing and really illustrate the concept of lifting wealth off the proverbial investment statement. Brian talks about wealth as funded contentment. By this he means, design your optimal life first and find ways to underwrite it. If we've interacted recently, you may have noticed that I'm increasingly trying to help clients to describe the richest life possible, and then I'll work on the strategies that will support and protect that standard of living. If you think about it for a minute, it really turns the financial industry on its head, changing our attitude from I'll be happy when I'm rich, to if I can afford to live in a way that I define as living richly, I'll be happy. In the related field of positive psychology, Dr. Martin Seligman of the University of Pennsylvania coined the acronym PERMA to describe what free, non-oppressed people would choose to do if they were able. PERMA stands for positive emotion, in other words, being in a good mood, engagement in activities, that feeling of losing track of time when you are fully engaged in something, relationships, spending time with friends and family members, having a meaning or purpose, in other words, working towards something greater than yourself, and achievement or accomplishment, or the pride that we feel when we've mastered something. But wait a minute, where are the dollar signs? Exactly. It isn't the dollars that drive the happiness according to the research. It's defining our happiness and then accumulating the dollars. What the research seems to be driving at is whether you follow the school of thought of funded contentment or PERMA or any of the other wonderful behavioral finance findings, well-being should be first and foremost living a good life, one that makes us happy, and the pursuit of dollars should only be a byproduct. When you focus on your own happiness, you're less concerned with what other people are vacationing or what other people are driving, with this attitude, the pursuit of the highest possible investment return just doesn't have the same heft. If you have enough, you can take a little less risk and focus your time and energy elsewhere. And we all know that time and energy 
are the truly scarce resources. So take a minute. In what ways do you feel wealthy right now? Not when your investments get to a certain point, but right now. For example, do you have a great group of friends and acquaintances? Do you have a beautiful garden that you enjoy tending to and watching flourish? Are you proud of an amazing collection of vinyl albums or collectible trading cards? In other words, what's your freezer full of meat?